So our actions that seem small, so small scale military actions can have, uh, can have dire detrimental effects to the whole space program, like global space program. Oh yeah, it can affect everything and everyone. Including the, like, including satellites. Oh yeah, especially satellites. Like that's, the, well, I mean, the, the good and the bad thing is, the good thing is a lot of satellites don't operate in low earth orbit. Like a lot of uh, the, the ones that we use day to day, a lot of them are in medium earth orbit, like they're GPS or they're geostationary, uh, which are way, way, way out there. And because of that, they they won't really ever deorbit. Or like it'll take you know millennia to deorbit because the, you know just because something's in space doesn't mean it's it's there forever. Especially like in low Earth orbit, the atmosphere doesn't just suddenly stop. It's not like you hit the Kármán line 100 kilometers and all of a sudden there's zero atmosphere. The atmosphere just slowly tapers. You know you can experience that yourself as you climb a mountain. You slowly realize there's less and less air. You just keep going, and uh, just because you're in space 200 300 kilometers up, there's still trace molecules. You know, there's the occasional oxygen molecule, there's the occasional nitrogen molecule. And so that is actually drag. So as a spacecraft in low earth orbit, depending on its altitude, will take anywhere from five years to five months to deorbit, you know, or, or two months or one month, like depending on its orbit or its, its altitude, we'll have some parasitic drag still and slowly throughout time slow down, which lowers its orbit, which dra drags it down more, lowers its orbit and et cetera, et cetera, and until it reenters. So if we end up with uh, some kind of catastrophic event where the entire low Earth orbit is, you know, has been inundated and blown up, it'll take months for the first band, you know, to clear up. It'll take years for something like beyond. Like, there's charts, you know, people have all this stuff available. You shouldn't look this it up. This is though. terrifying, by the way. <laughs> but this is really the. But again, the caveat is, for the most part, the low Earth orbit stuff would clear up within years. So we could get back to doing some lower with it. Like Starlink stuff would probably be able to be re, and you know we could kind of redo it and build up from the ground up again. GPS wouldn't be wiped out, and our geostationary satellites wouldn't be wiped out. But the scary thing is we wouldn't be able to relaunch and replace new things because we're stuck. We, we're not going to fly through that debris field, you know. And we avoid that by avoiding military actions in space. And these days, like there's more and more. Uh, requirements and, and legislation and, and especially trying to get international collaboration on having end of life plans for satellites. So that satellites, especially those in low earth orbit, have like drag devices to increase them. Once they're done, they literally pull like even just a ribbon, like a silly little like, you know, 40 foot long ribbon will sit there and it'll slowly, it, or it can speed up its reentry process by months or years or whatever. So we're starting to see that this is now an importance. There's a, a really cool company called Stoke Aerospace out in Washington is one of these launch provider, providers that's really looking not into just trying to be the next you know SpaceX launch company. They're really seeing satellite uh, bringing stuff down from space as actually being, especially right now, we have all of these hundreds and thousands of satellites being launched every year. Someone at some point is probably gonna have to do some cleanup. <laughs> and so they're looking at, at being one of those companies to do that. 